not all podcasters are created equal. This is the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. Welcome to Green Gab. This is Marla Esser, the Green Home Coach, and I am gabbing today with a rock and roller. This is Chrissy Truesdale. Chrissy is a friend of mine, well, a very young friend of mine, through kind of a circuitous route, but she is doing some amazing things right now. Chrissy, say hi to everybody. Hi, everyone. So, Chrissy, when I first met you, you were still in high school, and Mm -hmm. your mom and I met each other through a business women's conference, and she said, oh my gosh, you need to talk to my daughter. She is so into sustainability and green. You two would just have so much in common. And do you remember what your mom did after that? I think she just gave me your number, and I think we just called Ben and then. It was either that or she handed me the phone. I don't remember which. Yeah. But I remember within an hour we were talking. (laughs) (laughs) I, yeah, I think that I think no, I remember now. So I was driving in with my dad in the truck, and I'm talking to mom because she's telling me all about the conference, and she's like, "Oh yeah, my roommate fell into green energy here, up there." And I'm like, "Okay, that was it." It was it was meant to be, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. So tell us a little bit more about why that meeting was so cool, and not so much about us meeting, but what you were doing just blew me away. So tell us about the project that you started back when you were in high school, and tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so back in high school, and I was, I think, a sophomore, beginning of 2013, uh, I got really into kind of renewable energy, and I was was starting to go to my school's environmental action committee, kind of dragging my friends around, and I had this idea when a friend of mine, I went to a boarding school, and a friend of mine was from Arizona, and she was, you know, just chit-chatting about uh, renewable energy, and she was telling me about solar in her state. I was thinking, I was like, oh, it's too bad that solar doesn't work in New England. It's just like it would save us a ton of money and it would be really great to help mitigate climate change. And she's kind of asking, you know, why doesn't it work in New England? And I just kind of went on experience and I'd never seen it around. So I figured if it worked, someone would be doing it. But I really didn't have a good answer. I was like, oh, maybe it's snowy. So we looked into it that weekend just because we had to thank God for Google. And we found out pretty quickly <laughs> that. Massachusetts is actually the best state in the country for solar financially up until recently when New York kind of passed us, but it was a great place to do it. And countries like Germany, which had way less sun and worse weather than us, were powering almost half their grid with stuff. So we're like, we can totally do this. So we kind of had the idea of, okay, let's try to, let's try to promote some solar energy. And then also we kind of got to thinking, okay, if we're going to try to be helping people in this way, who, who do we really want to encouraged to get solar. And that's when I thought kind of my personal, like my family history. My grandfather was a firefighter and his kind of story or the story that I was always told he kind of passed away when I was pretty young was that he worked three full-time jobs just to keep the roof over my mom and my brother's head. He was a plumber, an electrician, he was a firefighter, he was also a firehouse cook. He was was (laughs) kind of a crazy man (laughs) trying to do it all at once. But it kind of got me thinking, well, I have a lot of family members who are kind of teachers or veterans, and they they gave up a lot to kind of give service to the rest of their community. They didn't really get much in return. So I figured, oh, these people are kind of underappreciated. It'd be great if we could help them out some life. I kind of had the idea for this little project that you were talking about earlier, and I called it Solar for Our Superhero. And I actually came up with the name while I was doing an internship with Marla. We were in St. Louis, brainstorming in our living room, what kind of stuff I should call it. <laughs> it's, it's kind of taken off from then. So as of October 2015, we're a 501c3 approved nonprofit, which took a very nice. long process. So we're excited. I love it. And <laughs> we're partnered with the Boston Solar Companies. So we're able to get solar panels at a wholesale. Really, the pieces are kind of really starting to come together. We're working on our pilot project right now. We're trying to get them up for a family who the mother's a nurse and the father's a firefighter. And the idea is that we can kind of thank these people for their service by giving them solar panels. And in doing so, we can help save them money every month, which will kind of ease the sacrifice that they make to kind of take up on these roles that are really important for our communities. But we can also create positive examples of renewable energy in our communities. When you see someone you admire and respect who's doing something you know is good but is kind of unconventional in your area, it kind of leads people to ask questions about it. So we offer, we kind of want to be there to encourage their neighbors, start a ripple effect, provide education on the different ways that you can go solar, whether it's leasing or buying or 
really, there's so many ways to do it. It's, it'd be kind of overwhelming for any individual person to even get started on it. So we kind of, the project kind of came from an idea of how can we help people and how can we make it easier for their neighbors to kind of follow suit. And it's amazing to see how fast it's all coming together. <laughs> it's, it's so fun yeah. to be a part of your board and to, and in full disclosure, I am a member of your board. Um, <laughs> but it's been just amazing to watch how much energy you've been able to create with this. And I, you know, you, when you first started talking about this idea several years ago, one of the things I absolutely fell in love with, and everyone that I've talked with about it says the same thing, is that you're using community leaders and people that are involved in the community to show the community how this can be a part of their everyday life. And that's so commendable to me. There's just not enough opportunity to do that. And I I love how you've connected those dots. Yeah, it was it was really heartwarming the other day. I actually yesterday I met our pilot project that fa- our first family uh, in person. We've been corresponding over the phone and email for a while, but I'm going to college now at Clark University, which is in Worcester, and our family's in Marblehead. We just got to meet up for the first time yesterday, and I was so touched that the wife, who's really her name's Laura, we're talking with her and she described the project as what we were doing as something that was truly beautiful. And Aww. it was just, it was really, it was really moving to me that the people I'm trying to help and the people I'm trying to thank, and I'm kind of nervous about because I didn't know them originally. They were nominated by um, kind of the fire captain. So we have mm-hmm. a nomination process where people nominate kind of their neighbors for the recognition. And it was just really moving to have it um, be well received by the people we were intending to thank in the first place. It was really great. Well, I guess... Right now, to see just everyday people recognized for what they give, you know, that's something that we need a lot more of right now. And understanding that all the little everyday heroic actions that people take are just as important as the big ones. And, you know, gosh, how many people give back to our community all the time? And the fact that you're using this idea to help celebrate those people is pretty awesome. Yeah. It's also really exciting. This is, I'm in my first year of college now, and as soon as I got to campus, I realized that if I wanted to kind of make big strides with this, I'd need some help. Yes. It's, really, it's really great that about, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, it's great that a semester and a half in, I now have a working staff or a team of others, including other Clark students, some of them which may or may not be a lot older than me, <laughs> who are kind of working on the 15 hours a week with me. It's a team of, I think, about 10 of them. We have a community outreach team and a fundraising team and a marketing team and bi-weekly meetings. And this large, and before college, I have to disclose, it was largely a one-man show, me running around trying to get everyone inter- to interact with each other and trying to figure out, okay, what groups can we partner up with and how can we build and grow our board? Marla and all my other directors were great at kind of calling in and helping me in the summer. And we did our annual fundraisers and for board calls here and there to kind of advise me. But it's really great now to kind of have a group of consistent people to be working with and kind of share in the excitement and the day to day stuff. Okay, Chrissy, your excitement is <laughs> contagious. Hang tight. We're going to take a quick <laughs> break and we'll be right back to hear more about how you're involving Clark. Wouldn't it be cool if your advertising could last forever? It can. With perpetual advertising, here's how it works. Magazine, radio, and television ads are efforts that people might see or hear once, and then they're lost forever. Perpetual advertising provides you with the chance for repeat exposure and replayability weeks, months, even years after it's originally inserted inside a podcast. So even if your advertising is included in a podcast years ago, those efforts are still impactful, providing you with true return on investment, real impact, thanks to perpetual advertising. Are you ready to change the way you and your company or organization advertises? Find out more and launch a unique perpetual advertising effort now by visiting twoguystalking.com forward slash sponsors. Hi, this is Art Maines from ScammerCast.com, where we educate, inform, and protect our elders and those who care for them on the Two Guys Talking Podcast Network. Welcome back to the Green Gab. Gabin today with Chrissy of Solar for Our Superheroes. And, And Chrissy, I'm just in awe of you, and it's 
really amazing and so cool when I get to look at somebody that's <laughs> way young enough to be my daughter and just realize what an amazing human being you are. I can't believe that you were only 17 when I first met you and you started. Actually, I think you were 16. I think I was. It was just before my birthday, I think. Yeah, I think you were just, yeah, I do think it was 16. And <laughs> it, and when I met you, you just blew me away with what you knew and with your passion and with your desire to create something that left people better off than they were before. And it was just such an honor to watch that blossoming in you and to see where it's gone. So tell us a little bit about yeah, how Solar for Our Superheroes started, and you're going to have to move quick. And then I want to talk about how how you've immobilized your college experience and inspired people to be part of this. Yeah. Well, I will say along the way, I have been blessed to have lots of different people kind of jump in and want to help me out, especially in the beginning you mentioned you're able to join my board and offer expertise, which is really helpful. One of the big things, originally I went to high school at a school called Phillips Exeter, and it was a pretty notorious boarding school. And so kind of to get started, I really looked into what resources my high school had. I knew I had to incorporate. I knew I had to become a nonprofit if I wanted to do things kind of by the books. And so they helped me find a pro bono lawyer out of Boston and kind of helped me out. I kind of tapped into that those resources to get started. I started going to networking meetings to figure out, trying to reach out to if, what kind of people could help me. Um, my aunt came across a representative from Boston Solar, so we kind of went out and had a good time of Woburn trying to talk ideas and seeing if we could collaborate. And this was really tricky in the beginning, especially since, believe it or not, I was deathly shy. I was like... <laughs> yeah, you've come death. out of your shell a lot I since I've known you. <laughs> the idea of calling a stranger had me that like the phone in my hand for a good 10 minutes before I could hit call. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh my gosh, it was bad. It was funny because um, this past weekend I was with my community outreach team. We were tabling an event and one of them's like, oh, I've never done networking before. And I was like, oh, okay, just do this, 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 and this. And I was like, oh, I've come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> you have. So I guess uh, leading up to Clark, I've had a number of things. Just kind of reaching out. and It's kind of like when you have an idea and you just you just share it with people. And you share, this is my idea. These are the things that I'm looking for. This is what I need. And people kind of, they want to help you. They If they know someone who can help you or they know someone who knows someone and it just kind of, it kind of works itself out naturally. That when I got to Clark, I kind of did a similar thing. I reached out, especially I made a meeting with the entrepreneurship department and I said, hey, I'm looking to do a minor in entrepreneurship. This is the project I have going. Who can I talk to? And they connected me with the sustainability director who now I'm working for her in the recycling crew for my work study too. So we got to know each other. They connected me with the what we call the Leap Center, which kind of has the career services and places to post internships or like volunteer opportunities. Most I have my team of interns. They can work for me for academic credit even. Oh um, wow! Yeah, I have one of my seniors. He's a geography major, and he's going to be doing some kind of long term planning with the solar industry as his uh, capstone project for his major. I'm kind of helping him do that, which is really cool. And I've, I've kept them. I've kept them really busy. We did last weekend, I was really proud of my outreach team. They did their first tabling event at the Massachusetts Green Party Convention, where they learned a lot, and we met some cool people in the Worcester community. We are doing, is we have this event called Splash, which is when the classes teach kind of a class on whatever they want for kind of middle school, high school students. So it could be like a chess class, or it could be a math class, or it could be how to pick out a good outfit class, <laughs> like really <laughs> okay. anything. So they're doing educational thing on solar as a part of kind of our outreach efforts. We've really been doing a lot. We're also, I'm getting ready for even in a couple of hours for, I have a practice session for, we're in a competition for $5,000 called the Eureka Challenge. So I had to submit a 35-page business plan, which, oh my gosh, was more work than all of my midterms combined. I understand, been there. Ouch. And yeah, so we had to do that, and then we had to deliver a five-minute pitch. So I'm involved at a practice session for that in a couple hours. Good experience, um, though. Man, you're getting good experience. But there's, there's really, there are a lot of opportunities. And the thing I'm trying to get my team to really understand, too, is if you know what you're looking for, if you have a vision and a destination in mind, and you kind of, and you tell people about it. You don't just keep it to yourself. Can you're we more clone you? Aware. Can you? What was that? Can we clone you? Because you have <laughs> learned at, you're not 20 yet, and you have learned. <laughs> no. More life I just, lessons. I just turned Nineteen in January. <laughs> yeah, you have learned more life lessons at your young and tender age than most of us learn in a lifetime. And one of the key <laughs> things you say 
you've learned to ask, and that's a beautiful, beautiful thing because too many of us in our lives don't. We don't ask. We forget. And I guess that's the thing. You just have to, if you have it, opportunities on your radar, you have a constant radar looking for ways, like, I know I'm signed up to the entrepreneurship newsletter and the sustainability newsletter and all of the, I'm signed up for all of the clubs, kind of everything. And when I open my mail, I don't just toss it because it's the same thing every week. But I look through it and I say, okay, what ways can I grow my business here? What can I go to that would help me find someone who might be, who might know someone that I can? It's kind of really just combing the resources you have and just being aware and open to different ways that you can kind of grow grow your business, but also to kind of better it. Like look people, whether it's people to help you or people to connect with or people who you can help. Because it's not all about taking from people either. It's not, okay, looking for all the people who can give you things. It's a lot of it is what can you do for others? I know oh, um, no, yeah. when, we were at the, when we were at the Green Party convention, there was a local a local kind of food growing organization, you know, like kind of community farm. And they had a pickup location that just opened near at a restaurant kind of a block away from my campus. So I said, oh, okay, give me a handful of flyers and I'll send it out to our following and hopefully we can help kind of your food organization growing too. And they were like, oh my gosh, that's great. So even, I don't see any way in the near future that they're going to necessarily help us out, but generating kind of that goodwill in the green community is a really good thing to be doing, too. Well, we have a, a friend here in St. Louis in the green building industry who always says that rising tides raise all boats, and that's so, so true. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody benefits. Yeah. You, I have to say, you know, I, I was awestruck when I met you because I just felt your energy and... You were such an inspiration to me then, and you are even more so of an inspiration to me now. And I cannot tell you how much I applaud you having the guts to just go do it. And I, you know, as one of your board members, I, I get to see kind of a little bit behind the veil and see what all you're doing. And I know all the hard work that you're putting into this. But I also commend that you've really opened up to what's out there and have taken advantage of all the resources that are available to you. And that's that's a great life lesson for all of us. I think you've hit it on the head, you know. When you are ready to give, then people are also ready to give to you. And I think that's happening for you in spades. And I know, I know there's great things to come with this project, and I'm just so excited for you. I want to come back after our break and talk about ways people can get involved if they'd like to help out and be able to do a little giving of their own. So we'll be right back. We have a lot of those, too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hang tight. We'll be right back. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows has just been released. And it's time for the two guys talking Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows book report. Join Brian and Amy Sumatros as they give you the two guys talking book report goodness of this most recent soon to be bestseller book only on the two guys talking podcast. Log on today and tell us what you think of the book. Check out www.twoguystalking.com. That's the number two guys talking.com. Thanks for listening and keep those wands at the ready. Creature feature fan? Like to appreciate all fangs with fangs and entertainment? So do I. Hi, I'm Eric Peters, a voiceover artist from The Voice Farm. Be sure to visit every week to see what's new and search for great entertainment with Real Bite. Check it all out at fangbangerpodcast.com. Well, we're back gabbing today with Chrissy of Solar for Our Superheroes. I'm getting so excited about this. And, oh, yeah, I'm already involved. I'm so glad I'm already involved. You've been talking about what else has been happening with Solar for Our Superheroes, how you've got a first project to get going. And Mm -hmm. what's, I mean, this has got to be really exciting, having the first project. When's it going to happen? And what's key? What What else do you need for this to all come together? Yeah, so we are super excited here. We are looking to have our first installation done by August 2016. So this summer, we have like a little block party and it's going to be great. To do that, we need $15,000, which sounds like a lot, but in comparison to what it would cost these families on their own, it's a fraction of the cost. It would cost like 20000 30000 for them. 
and we have this huge discount. We've already won a competition for $1,000 through this kind of online gaming platform, which has been really cool. And we've already fundraised about another 2000 to go directly towards it. So about 3000 in the coffers for it. And I mentioned earlier, I'm in a number of grants and competitions to hopefully get the rest. Fingers crossed if, if those come through, that'll be great. But if not, we're kind of relying on people to kind of donate to us. Our fundraising team put together a great Indiegogo campaign, which is a crowdfunding platform. So we're really looking to kind of get contributions from friends and family in that way. You can find the link to it on our Facebook page. And in general, you can find pretty much anything about us on our Facebook page, Solar for Our Superheroes, or Facebook.com slash Solar Number 4 Heroes. So that's one way you can get involved by helping us do that. And the great thing is once we get this pilot project going, we actually have a model set up. So it'll this first project will actually help fund future projects. Uh, every system that we install produces, not to get too technical, but it <laughs> produces what's called solar renewable energy credits, or SRECs, we call them in the industry. Okay. And SRECs usually are paid back. If you have a solar system, the SRECs are usually paid to you for contributing renewable energy to the grid. Since we're giving the panel to the heroes for free, they're going to reap all of the energy savings. They're not going to have really electricity bills, but they're going to be dramatically reduced. And so, in turn, our heroes are agreeing to sign back to us those SREX for the next 10 years, which is kind of how long that they last for. Which means that every system we install is going to be able to help fund future systems. So, if you donated $10 today, that $10 would be recycled for the next 10 years, or indefinitely, (laughs) as we keep doing more installations, which is really exciting. So, that's one way you can kind of get involved by helping us get that pilot off the ground. We're also looking for volunteers, so... That might be tricky for those of you living in the Midwest, especially since we're from uh, Massachusetts. If you know anyone or you have any ideas of groups or people we should be talking to, even if it's yeah, really anyone, we like to talk to people. So <laughs> the groups are people to connect with. Or if you know any heroes yourself who live in Massachusetts or people who might live in Massachusetts, we're looking for more nominations because we got to get put those installations on somebody's house. Those are kind of the three ways that we try to get people to get involved. So if people go to your Facebook page, then they can link up to the Indiegogo, and that's just basically a fundraising platform? Is that how it works? Yeah, it's kind of, people people are more familiar with um, Kickstarter, but basically they have kind of a goal meter, and they have, so the end goal will be 15,000. As we win competitions, if people contribute, you can see the goal getting closer and closer to the 15,000. Um, which is kind of exciting because when you donate, you'll see that bar kind of go up and like you can feel you did make a difference. (laughs) And uh, you can kind of keep track of it over time. We also have a cool little video on there. You can kind of learn more about us also on the platform. Yeah, that's kind of how that works. So this is all coming together rather fast. (laughs) You have a lot of, you have a lot of plates spinning at the same time right now. Yeah. And that's where I'm really happy that I have such a great team. (laughs) They're doing they're doing a lot to kind of make sure that everything's going on at the same time. For me, since it was kind of a one person thing for so long, it's kind of dizzying. But it's also really exciting because in the beginning, I was pretty impatient to get a system up. Now that I've become a little more patient, now that now stuff's happening, starting to happen. Uh huh. Funny how that works, yeah, huh? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, I mean, you got your five hundred one c three all that done while you were still. You're still in high school when you started all that, so you you got a lot done even before you got to college. And I know we did a lot of talking and planning, you know, the last few months before you went away to college to help you prepare about how you could inspire others to help you carry this message out into the bigger community. And it your planning's paying off, Christy, because that's happening. And it wasn't accidental. I mean, you put a lot of hard work into this, and. I'm excited to see it all coming together, and I know the community is excited for it. And I think the community, from the conversations we've been having, the community is really starting to get the value of tying this whole thought together with their community values and putting it out in the community. So I think that's really a cool benefit that I know is when in your initial plans and you're being at your very first fundraiser event when you were honoring the firefighters and your grandfather. It was really cool to see that sense of community and how it could all come together. Yeah. The one thing I really like about the project, too, particularly, is we kind of reach out to two different groups of people. I know I have a lot of interns. A lot of my interns, I kind of ask them, do they like, what kind of, what got you into the project? And some of them 
their answers were more on the, oh, I'm really into renewable energy, I want to fight climate change, I want to get more solar up, kind of that thread of thinking. And some of them were, well, my mom is a police officer, my dad's a firefighter, and I really like the idea of helping people. And I really think it's great that people who care more or less about one of the two are able to kind of come together and see how all of the issues, all of these issues that we're trying to fight really are intersectional. They really do overlap, and it's not its not a forced relationship. It's definitely, right. it's a very natural relationship that people really haven't picked out quite yet. So I think it's, it's really neat to see when people get excited about that overlap. Well, you, I mean, it's like everything else, you know, they all connect. And a lot of times, even the very seemingly unconnected or connected. So you definitely have found a great way to bring a linkage between a big, what could be viewed as a technology and community and see how those can tie together. Because energy is important to all of us. It's what makes our lives happen in many cases and all the wonderful conveniences and things in our house that make it go in our building. So to tie the two together is, I think, really helping people to see the bigger picture in a way that maybe they haven't seen it before. I agree. Well, Chrissy, I am so excited to be a part of this, and I'm very honored to be a part of it. So thank you for that. And anyone that wants to keep track of where Solar for Our Superheroes is going, please check out her Facebook page. You can just go onto Facebook and search Solar for Our Superhero. I'll also put the link up in the podcast notes so we have that for future reference. And any way you guys would like to help out, Solar for Our Superheroes, let Chrissy know, um, contribute to the Indiegogo campaign, or just share the link with somebody and let them know that it's out there. And Chrissy, thank you so much for gabbing green with us today here on Green Gab. And I look forward to having you back in a while and sometime after the first installation when we can post some really amazing pictures of how that's all going. So thank you very much. (laughs) Have a great day. 